Hey guys, this is Sascha for MobileGeeks.com and this is my Google Nexus 7 and I'm finally doing my walkthrough because I would love to share my experiences with it. Uh, I'm totally in love with this tablet right now, especially because it starts only at $199. So as you all know, it's based on the NVIDIA Tegra 3, a 1.2 gigahertz quad core. Well, actually it has five cores because it also comes with a fifth application core that's clocked at one gigahertz that is uh, constantly running when you're just working on your desktop or when you're just doing a movie playback or um, uh, playing some Google Music. Um, as soon as you're opening like a game or something that really needs some extra uh, power and performance, all those four cores are kicking in. So well, it's not only the very first tablet that comes with the new Android Jelly Bean, or actually it's even the very first device because the Google Nexus 7, oh sorry, the um, Galaxy Nexus smartphone got its update uh, over the air, but this is the very first device that really comes with Jelly Bean pre-installed. This one has now the version 4.1.1. Uh, let's check it out here, because this also gives you a little idea about the performance. Here we go, there it is, 4.1.1, because it just got a system update about a week ago. Well, well, as soon as I got it, right, it, it wanted to download this update. What I would love to show you is, first of all, this performance. I don't have a lot of widgets on my, on my home screen right now, but the so-called Project Butter is just uh, adding these very smooth animation. Now, take a look at this, how it's dimming the second layer to black, right? Simple things, also when I'm opening a folder, this is so fast. So how did Google achieve this? They just added some extra frames per animation so you don't have any stuttering anymore, which just makes it perfect right now. Uh, I almost um, achieved the same performance with the custom ROM, but um, this is even better. So when it comes to pre-installed uh, applications, it only comes with the Google Apps. That means um, I put them all in here. So Gmail, Maps, Earth, Talk, Currents, um, of course the Contact App, um, Gallery and Calendar. Okay, that's self-explaining. And it's also the first device that comes with uh, Google Chrome. And that means when you're logged in to your Chrome on your desktop, it's automatically syncing your bookmarks and your history. So when I'm opening a new app over here, you can see um, the, the history or the browser history of my uh, Vio Z21 PC. So when I, when I just open, okay, let me go to this one here. Here's our Post PC Nation channel on YouTube. There we go. It also syncs the bookmarks and whatnot. So it's a great browser. I love the Chrome browser in general, and it's great that you can now share all this with your mobile device. So this isn't beta anymore, this is the final version. Of course, there will always be updates. Um, the new Google Plus update, uh, sorry, the new Google Plus um, app is on here too. It kind of changed a little bit in terms of the layout. It has a more of a, of a flipboard style right now. So let's just... Uh, fetch all these pictures and this content. And as soon as I got all of this preloaded, the animation is just fantastic. Here we go. Oh, it's stuttering a little bit here because I just have a very busy stream with a lot of pictures. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at this. That's not too bad, isn't it? So if you want to follow me on Google+, Plus, of course, you can find me over there, Sascha Pallenberg, and uh, can stay up to date with all the content that I'm sharing over there. Um, what else is, we have the, the YouTube app, and we have um, the Google Music app, which leads us to a little test of the speakers. Can't get any louder. It's okay, wish, right? It's enough to fill a room, but it's definitely not enough to uh, to get enough sound out at a Megadeth concert. 
But anyways, it's, it's definitely the guys that are really into audio, uh, that would probably just uh, connect their headset over here and enjoy this. But if you're doing some casual gaming, I mean, the speakers are absolutely fine. And of course, we have also the Play Store from Google here. Um, I've installed a bunch of gaming apps and um, we're going to do some gaming performance tests very soon. How about trying out um, Dead Trigger? It's the newest you know, zombie ego shooter from Mad Fingers. And it's available for free right now. They started to sell it for 99 cents. Now it's for free. Okay, let's do this. Let's kill some zombies. Okay. Okay, I've never been to this level. Oh, that's why. I see the graphics are absolutely fantastic. Um, I felt a bunch of hiccups here. Maybe there was an, up, uh, an app updating in the background. I'm not sure about this because normally you shouldn't face any performance issues. Look at this. This looks really cool now. Huh? So this is really taking advantage of the Tegra engine. Well, not of the Tegra engine, but of the, um, the Tegra platform. So if you if you're into the latest games for Android, I tell you what, the Nexus 7 is just a fantastic device, especially for 199 or 249 because that's how much my version is. I got the 16 gigabyte version that I can only highly recommend to you and I will show you later why. Okay, what else is here? Anyways, trust me. I've never had any issues in terms of performance uh, when it comes to 3D games. The only game that was kind of really sluggish feeling was Nova 3, but I think that's because of a lousy port from the Gameloft guys. Um, yeah, talking about um, storage, this is the 16 gigabyte version. And now take a look at this. Here we go. So I only have 1.29 gigabytes available right now. And I've, uh, well, 13.24 gigabytes were available for me at the beginning. And I've been downloading uh, about 18 games right now. I have a little bit of music down here, some pictures and whatnot. 1.29 gigabytes are available. And this happened just in a couple of hours. So um, be aware, if you're getting the 8 gigabyte version, you will easily one or two storage problems or memory problems. Um, and keep in mind, you can't upgrade it with uh, any SD card slot. There's nothing on here. Get Just invest these 50 bucks. Right? I know it's expensive if you compare this to a 16 gigabyte or an 8 gigabyte SD card, which is maybe six or seven dollars. right? And now Google is charging you for an additional 8 gigabyte, like $50. But tell me, but I can tell you, it's worth it. So I would highly recommend this. Um, what I would also love to show you is what about the browser performance? Um, let's go to maybe let's go to the Verge. I'm not sure if they have a mobile version. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. Hello, The Verge. Here we go. So the home page of The Verge is definitely a busy one with a lot of graphic elements. And uh, but as soon as the whole thing is loaded, which obviously takes a while, then it should be a matter of our, of our Wi-Fi right now, you would see how smoothly the Chrome browser 
is scrolling through this. Here we go, finally. Okay, let's do the landscape test. I think that's quick enough. Okay, it's still rendering, it's still loading pictures. Jesus, that's one of a big page. <laughs> but as soon as it's loaded, as you can see, let's do a pinch to zoom and you see how quickly it's rendering. So that's not too bad. Tell you what, it was way easier to do this um, with, uh, with Google News. But I think, what about the double click to zoom? It takes a while until it re-renders everything. Look at this, bling, there we go. But I think that's pretty good. And um, by the way, what about viewing angles? There's no problem at all to just take a look at it from the side. Um, the colors are staying the same. It's a pretty decent display. That's because it's an IPS display. Of course, it only only has 1280 by 800 and it's not a retina display it's also not a super AMOLED display but this is a proper display i remember reviewing netbooks for three four hundred dollars about three years ago they weren't even close display wise to this um, nexus 7 here so browser performance is, is pretty good especially for casual uh, browsing uh, in terms of the verge i might recommend you to download the verge app because the yeah the website is quite heavy in a mobile browser. Or, well, it's not a mobile browser, it's a browser. Um, what else do we have? Uh, I've been showing you some games. Um, I've been showing you the browser performance, sound, display. I think it's about time to check out um, the new notification bar. So, what you can see over here is, that, for example, if you're getting new messages, you, you can already see a bunch of them right away. And I can kind of squeeze them together again and open them with two fingers. What you can also do, a bunch of apps are uh, taking advantage of this new notification bar. For example, I took a screenshot and instead of just opening it in the gallery, if I want to share it, I can share it right out of my notification bar. By the way, if you don't know how to take a screenshot, volume down and the power button and just hold it and there you go. Watch out what's going to happen with the notification bar. There it is. So like apps like Pulse and Epi Geek are taking advantage of this new notification bar. And once again you can see this fantastic little dimming effect of uh, Jelly Bean. I just love it. Or Project Butter. Um, Last but not least, of course, we need to talk about Google Now. So just move your thumb up the lock screen and here is Google Now, your new personal assistant with an integrated voice search. Um, as you can tell by now, I have a heavy German accent, um, but it still works pretty good. Google. Google. <laughs> How tall, okay, <laughs> Google, oh, come on, Google. How tall is Kobe Bryant? Kobe Bryant is six feet, six inches tall. Google, doesn't like my Google. Show me pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge at sunset. Huh? That's pretty cool, isn't it? 2.647 multiplied with 1164. Okay, that wasn't really working. 3.69 by 7.42. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. 4.94 multiplied 6. The answer is 29.64. Okay, I'm just I'm just too stupid to use it obviously. Just trust me, it really it really really works. United 897. United Airlines 897 from Washington to Beijing is on time and departs in 6 hours 21 minutes. Isn't this pretty cool? Show me the latest score of the New York Yankees. Yankees beat the Tigers four to three. Not too bad, huh? So, one more. Call the W Hotel in Taipei. Calling. I don't have it in my address book or something, right? It's just we searching it on the web, and it would just call it. Well, of course, it doesn't have a phone module here. Um, set alarm seven a.m. You know, simple things. It just works. Another cool thing about Google Now is, let's go back. Okay, now it's set the alarm. Um, are these cards? Um, the upper card is always um, the weather. And due to the fact that I'm locked into Google Latitude, it knows where my workplace is, where office is, and where I'm living, and also the places where I'm constantly checking in. For example, the Guangha Digital Plaza, that's a huge computer market here in Taipei. So it tells me automatically that the bus number 254 will depart in one minute, and it takes me three minutes to walk to the bus station, right? Because it just realized that I'm constantly checking into the Guangha Digital Plaza. If I want to go home, it tells me, you know what, um, the MRT, which is a subway here, departs in three minutes. It takes you another three minutes to go to Nanjing Eastwood Station, and then in 26 minutes you're going to be home. It was kind of creepy because it started to pop up after some two days of me using this device, right? It kind of figured out what I was doing, right, and it just combined the information of latitude with the public transport system data here, and of course with. Um, uh, with Google Maps and with my position, and all of a sudden, you've got these apps up. Um, over here, we have a, a bunch of um, locations. Here's a, is the hotel queue, uh, the hotel crowd. The queue bar is a bar where we constantly are in this hotel here on Fridays. Uh, by the way, today is Friday, that's even better. Um, some restaurants, IKEA is here, so uh, points of interest, right? And um, this makes Google Now just a fantastic personal assistant. Um, you have, of course, you have additional cards. For example, if I would constantly do a flight search, um, this card would show up, right? There you have flights and sports and uh, appointments, and uh, it would just tell me, for example, if I would have an appointment uh, about 10 miles away from our office, right? And it would just drag this information out of the Google Calendar and it would show me. Um, a new card saying, you know what, you might want to leave right now because the traffic is a little bit heavy, right? And you need to be at your appointment in 45 minutes. It takes you 40 minutes to get there. Uh, it's just kind of intelligent reminder when you have a busy schedule. Google Now is just absolutely fantastic. And you do currency and whatnot. So, yeah, what can I say? I mean, for $199 or 249 for the 16 gigabyte version, which I highly recommend to get, this is a new benchmark when it comes to tablets. But it's not only a new benchmark when it comes to 199 or 249 tablets. I think it's, it would even be worth like a $400 price tag because the performance is great, the build quality is absolutely fantastic, and the features of it really makes it uh, worth considering to buy. This is the new Google Nexus 7. I'm Sasha from MobileGeeks.com. Thanks for watching. Yeah.